Okay then. Ladies and gentlemen, Rana's will be playing four, four, three, two. After a winless streak of six games, the fans were not happy about Watch being stubborn about his 4-3-3 wide formation with the DM. Watch was not happy either, so after a team meeting boosting Marol, he decided to change things before the second round started. Randas were only ninth after getting smashed by Midland and Copenhagen, and things had to change for the next 12 matches to give us the championship round and a safe top 6 finish. Watch switched the formation for a 4-4-2, decided to play it simple with two central defenders, ball winning midfielder with a Mezzala, two inverted wingers with one on attack and advance and deep lying forward. I also switched up sudden instructions like shorter passing, lower defensive block or never pressing the strikers, which was a frequent problem in the recent matches. This tactic was meant to give some hope to Randers fans, because this trick of madness can't last forever. To stop that, I pulled the trick hated by everyone with FM experience longer than 10 minutes. I decided I will play the final games of year 22 twice. And I know you are already booing me in the comments, but hear me out. When FM23 came out for free on Amazon slash Epic Games, I got it as soon as I could. It was mainly due to the fact I just like getting those FMs and never playing them, which was also meant for this actually last season's edition, but I always wanted to return to at least sort of regular uploads on YouTube. So I picked up the game, and without getting used to it, I instantly recorded the first two episodes. No initial practice was probably the reason I had a really bad first round, and I don't want to be sacked my first ever YouTube save. So I have decided it will be fair to separate a save file into two, name one of them a practice save, and see how it goes. If it goes to pieces, I'll just restart all seven games, no save and reload between them. And I gave myself two chances to go through this period. So how did the practice save go, you may ask? <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head! <laughs> I guess we'll make it free. By the way, I tried to see if there is any washed club that would sign the guy who can't win a game of football. Okay, I guess North Zealand who also have Shadowlup can, or not. But this is a story regarding Randers, so let's stick with a 4 3 3 and see how the actual save goes. I think Watch found the key. Cautious mentality, high intense pressing, higher tempo and making sure we walk the ball into the box. That lifted Randers to 8th in the table, but was it a fluke or the beginning of something bigger? You know what, it probably was a fluke because we lost 3 goals to Brandby. Yeah, that one is a consolation. Wait, did Vulcan just score again? We've got a corner in the 88th minute. Dos Santos takes a ball? Oh, you beauty! What a headshot! What a hit! It's a massive comeback for us. It proved that we will fight back in the Danish Superliga and get at least to that championship drop. The determination players showed in these final 35 minutes gave us massive hope for a better future. Next up, we've got a win over a third tier side Hellerup in DBU Pokal in third round. Although I've got two bad news. Oliver also will not be a part of the starting 11 for a certain period of time due to doing this. And Dos Santos got injured. It was just a third tier club, but when Patrick Carglen and the defense with the help of massive luck stopped several Arthur's chances in the scoreless derby, hope for better was real. All we needed was the goal scoring department, which managed to score once against Viborg and Zuckerberg each. By the way, this was goal of the year. Wins kept coming as we won against second tier events still in the cup. However, next up we faced Linkby. And we drew after a deflection. And although we jumped into the championship round places at the end of the round, we have not helped ourselves with another defensive disaster class against Velje and the loss against Odenza. These games were right before the new year and the transfer window, and quite a lot of movement between the players had to occur before the matches in the new year. I knew our defense was sometimes outrageous, so I sold our keeper. Patrick Carlgren to Copenhagen for almost a mil. He also only got half a year in his contract, so that was kinda good money for me. We spent that money on Mateo Karamatic, an Austrian centre-back from Slovenian side Olympia Ljubljana. These are only the transfers before the window has started. We also got Denzel Ovusu and Tobias Klista back from loans in Norway, and Oliver Jensen came back from Iceland. I also realised we severely lack staff. For example, having only 2 out of 7 available coaches. So basically, we lacked people. New coaches were needed. I signed Bruno Miguel as a defensive coach, James Best and Marco Tmim for analytics, and 
this guy. That is back up! 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 